Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. This is Rob Thurner with uh, you in the UK here, looking forward to this session. While we're waiting for everyone to join, perhaps you could just add in the chat, please, your, your destination. So where are you at the moment? Uh, please just put your place in the chat. I'll start with myself. So as you come in, please just tell us. So we've got Hannah from Johannesburg. Good to, good to have you with us. Hannah, hope you're doing well. Who else have we got? We've got um, Zainab from Lagos in Nigeria. Uh, all of you in the same time zone. So I guess uh, I should say, I hope you've had a good lunch and you're looking forward to your afternoon. Who else have we got? Uday from Mumbai. Uh, good afternoon to you, Uday. Great to have you with us. I hope... Uh, Life is getting a bit easier these days once we've got uh, coming to grips with this pandemic situation. Um, uh, Estasham from Pakistan, great to have you with us, a country I know very well. So tell us, whereabouts are you from? Are you from Islamabad, Lahore, Karachi, somewhere else maybe? We get to hear from Islamabad, um, beautiful city, uh, and I hope you're keeping well. Who else have we got with us? It's raining. It's boiling hot here in the UK, uh, but I guess we will have rain probably in 24 hours and thunderstorms to look forward to. So who else have we got? I see we've got some more people keeping a bit quiet. We've got a little bit more time before we go live with the recording. Anyone else? Please tell us where you're from today. see I can look at the others okay great so we've got um, we've got others joining us as well we've got Amita good morning uh, in Vancouver great to have you with us and any others please tell us your location and then we'll get underway so this is a one hour session and we will be hitting the record button about now. So if you're watching us live, welcome. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching the recording, I hope you're in good health and looking forward to the next hour where we will be giving you an overview of one of our most popular programs. This is the Postgrad Diploma in Digital Business, PGDDB as we call it. And my job for the next hour is to walk you through the program and importantly, to get any questions from you, uh, we, we're able to get the Q&A going. I'll be looking in the Q&A and uh, taking as many questions as we need to uh, in just a few moments. So I'm sure you're familiar by now with Zoom and how Zoom works. Please, just a reminder, if you can keep your microphones on mute, if you're not talking, um, then uh, I will be able to be clearly heard to those live and those watching the recording. Please use the q and I've got the Q&A uh, box open on one of my other screens I'm using today. So please put your questions in there. If I can't answer the question immediately, be sure I will come on to that or our friends in the program support team will help me. So we'll get through as many of those questions as we possibly can. Uh, and if you are going to be using the chat, just a reminder to make sure it's for panelists and attendees so everyone can see your question and everyone can see our answers, but it would be best if we use the Q&A if you can. So what I'd like to do is um, just make sure that uh, you're feeling comfortable. This should be a safe place to ask your questions and uh, we will do our very best to answer as many of those as possible. So what we're going to do in this short session now is give a little bit of introduction to myself. I'll tell you who I am and, and my role with the, with the organization. Tell you a bit about Emeritus, uh, the business which is providing this service and a unique and very successful business model and, and what we're doing with the business schools, uh, in this case, the MIT and Columbia Business School. We'll then dive into the program itself. We'll look at the learning methodology. We'll look at the highlights of the diploma program We'll be looking at uh, the profile of people who have done this course before and the nuts and bolts of the application process, 
some housekeeping stuff around the fees and uh, application and the certificate you'll get on completion and then we'll pass it over to more detailed Q&A. But feel free to put your questions as we go through and I'll do my best to answer those as we go through our programme. So I hope that looks okay to all of you. Now, before we get into the detail, just a very quick high level view uh, about myself. So I do three things for a living. I'm a digital consultant. I help businesses with their digital transformation journeys. And uh, this includes all aspects of their digital presence, building digital products and services, helping with user first customer experiences, e-commerce, mobile marketing, data and analytics. So all aspects of transformation uh, we cover in our consultancy work. Very proud to work as a uh, consultant for Burn the Sky, the business that uh, I founded 10 years ago now, and as a facilitator and an executive education coach to be working with some great clients. Emeritus I've now been working with for five years and developing uh, distance learning programs on behalf of the MIT Columbia Business School in SEAD Cambridge Judge. So I'm very familiar with the model and taking these online experiences to people all over the world. Uh, I work very closely also with Google developing and delivering their digital academy programs to clients looking to Google for best practice and how to digitize their businesses. And I spend most of my time outside the UK, well, unless it's lockdown, of course, and the pandemic, uh, in which case I'm stuck behind a screen. Um, and I'm very keen to return to all the places that you've put in the chat. And I've been to all of them in the last few years. I feel rather nostalgic not being there and able to fly at the moment. But our clients, when we do travel largely in the Middle East, in uh, the, the uh, Indian subcontinent, further out to the APAC markets, um, also uh, done quite a bit of work in South Africa and Nigeria, and we work in uh, the financial services, uh, utility, telco sector specifically, and you can see some of the brands and some of the, the clients that we work with on the screen there. I've also made a bit of time to write three best practice guides around digital, specifically mobile, and I'm happy to share more information on that uh, if that is of use. Now, let me move on to Emeritus. Emeritus is a world-class business set up by two entrepreneurs, one from Harvard, one from INSEAD, who developed this concept of creating distance learning experiences to people who don't find it easy to get to the States, get to Europe, get to the locations of these business schools, but want the same quality learning experience. The business has grown rapidly, now serving business, business schools and universities across the world uh, with a very even split of participants and learners coming from LATAM and the USA on, on, on the west side, Europe, a strong presence uh, coming out of uh, the European business schools and uh, a growing user base there. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, working with uh, INSEAD and some of the other business schools to serve uh, the, the GCC markets, India, where our program support team are, and a very thriving culture of education we're proud to serve, and then looking out to APAC, uh, where we have a presence also. So we've served over 60,000 uh, students across the world in our time of uh, running these business, business, business class education programs. What we've learned in that time is there is a certain formula for learning success, which we follow. We have live webinars and graded assignments and simulations. We wanna make sure that what we do is um, conforms to the intellectual and academic rigor that comes with going to a business school, but has the flexibility to allow this to be uh, um, learnt in bite-sized modules, which are flexible enough for you to be um, learning alongside in parallel with your busy work lives. We believe passionately with peer-to-peer -peer learning. 
that peer-to-peer -peer learning and learning from each other is a core part of the learning experience. Building in simulations of the real world, a very important way of um, getting you ready to apply the principles, real world applications. So when you're getting back into your businesses, immediately you can apply the learnings. We create um, user-friendly learning tools and experiences. And of course, to get our qualification, we expect you to go through a fairly rigorous uh, assessment process and the assignments and the capstone assignment included in this program are graded for you to get the requisite uh, qualification. As a result, we're very proud to have an 85% completion rate on our programs, uh, which I think you'll find is uh, unusual when compared with other learning experiences. Now, moving on to the, the more detailed end of it, you wind up with emeritus, not just getting a qualification, having finished a program, but also being part of a global learning community. And this is one of the great values we find. I deliver a number of programs from emeritus and it's alarming how many people join a program and they stay in contact. They stay in contact with um, emeritus, they stay in touch with each other. So it's a vibrant online community. We expect when COVID becomes the thing in the rear view mirror that uh, this will become face to face again. But it's a very important place to, to build your network. There's tuition advice uh, across your learning journey and an opportunity also to meet with alumni and if you are starting up a business, a startup corner with advice for entrepreneurs also. So let me dive into the program itself, an introduction to the diploma. What we have is a program of nine months. The nine months will give you two core learning components. The first six months will be spent on live webinars, and graded assignments and videos that link with three of our courses. The Digital Strategies for Business course, which is a Columbia Business School program. The Digital Transformation Platform Strategies for Success, which is an MIT program. And Digital Marketing, Customer Engagement, Social Planning and Analytics, again, a Columbia Business School team. So we've built this hybrid program which combines those three courses. So that's the first six months. And then the final part, the three months that follow, this is a capstone assignment. And the beauty with the capstone assignment is it allows you to apply your learnings across the first six months with a real life example, which will be written by yourself and it will be graded by the tutors on the program. So it's a way of building the best of blended learning, the principles you learn on the program with the live sessions, with the pre-recorded sessions and the mini assignments as you go through that, and then the major assignments at the end of this. So these are the core pillars of our program here. I talked about blended learning a minute ago. Let's just think about why this is important and how it really works. So as I said, you are busy executives. You'll be running uh, your own businesses or working for other businesses and creating a separate stream and carving out a time of your life where you can be doing your learning is sometimes problematic. And so we build this into a series of bite-sized learning chunks, which will be uh, on a weekly basis, webinars, which you'll be attending live, um, pre-recorded videos, which you'll be watching, graded assignments, and in-class labs. So there'll be quite a lot of time working individually, but also working with others in your cohort on the program and on the assignments themselves. This will be graded, and we will be making sure that we bring in some role play we bring in some, some gamification, and we want to make this as fun and lively as possible, as well as, as, well as landing the serious academic messages uh, and concepts and frameworks that sit behind the program itself. And this gives you a scale across the 
nine month uh, period of the things that you will be covering in terms of the lectures, the assignments, the case studies you'll be reading, the uh, discussions, simulations and the capstone project. So we want to make sure that this is a varied learning diet for you and that each of these components do tie together very neatly. And it's, it's our role to make sure that the capstone assignment does encompass so much of the learning earlier on in the programme and distill it into a real world practical uh, study, which um, will be graded and allow you to really understand how the principles can be applied with the assistance of the, the course leaders as we go through the programme. So I get a question here from um, uh, Uday Raj, what will be the live session timing during the day and what day of the week? So we typically do the live sessions at around this time in the day. The reason being that we're able to satisfy people on both sides of the, uh, the, 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 the time spectrum, if you like. You'll be in India there now where I suspect it's kind of, what's the time? So it'll be around, um, I suspect six o'clock in the evening, so early evening for you. It'll be late morning, well, it'll be the morning. If, if I'm on the uh, east coast of the States, it'll be around uh, nine o'clock in the morning. So around this time uh, allows us to satisfy people in most time zones. So Amita in uh, Vancouver, you're gonna be, I suspect, a little earlier too. Let me just check. Hey Google, what's the time in Vancouver? The time in Vancouver, BC, Canada is 6.16. 6.16, there you go, Amita, Google agrees with you, so there you go, 6, six o'clock in the morning. So this time in the day, it's a very early time for Amita, but a little bit later for others. So this is the time where we, we are aiming to, to do this, the, at a time that suits everyone. Um, the, the next part of the programme, let me just move on, is looking at the different participants. And you can see here that we've got uh, a, a, a combination of faculty who between them bring many years of uh, leadership, proven thought leadership in their respective areas. So David Rogers, I feel I've, I have actually worked with both of these gentlemen, David Rogers um, on the digital marketing strategy and digital strategies uh, for business program. Uh, a, a very engaging um, and uh, articulate leader. And he's worked with a number of global businesses. You can see there, Google, GE, Toyota, Visa, Macmillan, um, and runs a number of workshops live in countries around the world when he can, and a well-respected thought leader in various publications, which he contributes to on a regular basis. Jeff Parker, visiting scholar at MIT, where David is with Columbia Business School, and uh, an expert in digital platform and has written the, the program uh, for digital transformation platform strategies for success. So these are the two experts who will be guiding our program here. And they've, all, they've written respectively best practice guides, which are not essential buying, but which are an important part of the program. So what I'd like to do now is just to dig into a little bit more uh, detail and look at the frameworks themselves. One of the key frameworks is developed by David Rogers and it's the customer networks framework. This summarizes the key building blocks to developing a strong digital presence. We look at access. What are the access points for you to reach your customers? Uh, in other words, what is their behavior and how can we make sure we have a strong presence and we're easy for them to connect with, whether it's across your website, whether it's across social channels, e-commerce platforms, or, or whatever form of contact uh, that you are developing with them. It's all very well to drive attention and to drive awareness, but that's nothing if we can't engage people. So we look at how we develop engagement models and develop content, which is indeed going to resonate with those customers, be customer centric, and then drive, uh, build, start building a relationship with the customer. 
As with so many areas of digital, marketing fundamentally requires us to customize. If we know about our customer and we know who they are, then we can be developing customized experiences. Now this ranges from the products and services that we're developing and we are, are selling to them, whether it's, whether it's um, an online financial services um, product or it's a, a service which can be customized based on the type of user and their preferences. We should be looking to customize. Uh, as famously um, Seth Godin said, businesses should be focusing more on developing products and services for their customers rather than finding customers to buy their products and services. So we look to flip the model and develop a much more customized uh, approach to what we are creating and selling. The network effect allows us to be building our presence and connecting with our customers and for them to connect with each other also. So if you can identify who your key customers are, who the key influencers are, you can be feeding content to those individuals who themselves can become valuable um, partners and effectively an outsourced sales team for you. So we look at the network effect and how we can leverage our customer base. And finally, collaboration. And it should be very clear, and this comes across clearly in the platform component, the platform um, uh, uh, program, that collaboration is an essential characteristic as we move away from a buyer-seller model to creating a more dynamic platform where we can bring in different parties and they can add value to the platform uh, proposition. You can look at Amazon, you can look at Airbnb, you can look at um, um, Coursera. In each case, we've got different players coming together on a platform and it's the collaboration and interface between those players which creates more value in the platform than we have in the individual players on that platform. So the key frameworks, we, we want you to be, we want to challenge you here to be thinking about different ways of tackling your business. The first one on our marketing strategy, we want to be giving you a structured approach for you to be devising your digital marketing strategy. Gone are the days where you come up with an annual plan, you put it in the market or you put it to your marketing department and they execute and you see how well they did 12 months later. This is dynamic, it's real time. We need to be looking at how we can build a structured approach but allow the flexibility for a test and learn adapted approach as we go through. We look fundamentally at how we can measure. If we can measure it, we can improve it. So we look extensively at measurement and different ways of measuring. And that ties us into data value. Uh, so many businesses are sitting on vast amounts of data and they may be very good at capturing it, but they're not very good at unlocking its true value. So here we look at different ways of tackling unstructured data, bringing that in with your structured data to derive real insights about your customers and about the implications on your product and service development. On the uh, business model, and there's so much talk now about the business model and business model disruption, we're looking here at how we can understand what disruption really means and what today's competitor uh, is doing. Now, we've developed a different concept here, which is co-competition. So it's not competition, nor is it co cooper cooperation, but it's a combination of the two. So those who may have been perceived as competitors before can in fact be seen as collaborators and, co and bringing a collaborative approach allows you to enhance the value of your proposition. Just think about the, the insurance industry, for example. The insurance businesses are looking at various different sectors and building in their risk models in order to provide value to the players in those different areas, whether you're looking at the car sector and how the insurance market plays into 
uh, autonomous vehicles, for example, if you're looking at health club and how a health club can be working and sharing data with uh, the, the health industry and indeed the financial services industry, the combination of those players can provide a very user-friendly and highly targeted and data-driven business model rather than having three separate businesses not talking to each other and therefore not maximizing the value of that collaboration. We focus very much on output. So we're looking at roadmaps and how you can be reimagining your business strategy with a clearly defined uh, roadmap in mind. Uh, we look very much at the test and learn approach and how we can be um, collaborating and uh, uh, in an agile way, innovating with a test and learn uh, mindset. Failure is good as long as you learn from the mistakes and you build that into your, your future business plans and workflows. And disruption, a fundamental part, looking at ways that we can identify and respond to disruption before it's too late. And just look at the high street, realize how the retail sector has been fundamentally disrupted and some of the opportunities uh, to, to get around that. So we will be looking at many different case studies to illustrate some of these points. And I'm not gonna go through each of these in turn, but let's just uh, take a little look at uh, the one on the top row. It's fascinating to see how the telecom industry, one I follow very closely has evolved. What was it, for example, that Nokia did right? And what was it that Nokia did wrong? And where did Apple come in to disrupt the telco industry? I think it should be very clear that Nokia was very much focused on uh, building out a, a, a scaled model to sell more and more uh, mobile phone devices without really giving sufficient time and focus on the innovation team who are doing some experiments around um, touchscreen technology. And of course, Apple came along and stole the show. We can look at how, looking down to the next, the next model, uh, how Netflix disrupted the movie industry by providing a truly um, content agnostic platform that was incredibly easy for the user and how the user is able to be targeted with very relevant genres of um, uh, movies based on their previous browsing behavior and their previous viewing behavior. In fact, uh, Netflix itself is now subject to disruption, having built a very significant market share, particularly under the COVID times. But you could argue with Disney Plus, with Apple TV launching just around the corner, they themselves may be subject to disruption. So fascinating world there. And then as we look at, um, I'll just jump down to the bottom row, digital marketing strategy. When we look at a business like Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, do they need to innovate? Well, you bet they do. As sugary drinks become less popular, subject to taxation, and as more healthy ingredients and sustainability become a core part of any business, it's fascinating to see how Coca-Cola has reinvented the customer experience, providing a much more personalized experience and relying on their customers to generate a lot of content. So we've got many different case studies that form a core part of our learning experience here. The capstone assignment, before we move on to the questions, um, the capstone assignment uh, is the, if you like, the, the kind of uh, culmination of the six months of learning. And here we'll be looking for you to develop in three months your own business solution, your own business model. Um, we'll be demonstrating that you have understood the three programs that we go through, giving you an opportunity to work in groups and select in your groups a real world business uh, challenge or idea and apply the learnings to that challenge or that idea. So you'll be strategizing to uh, initiate a, uh, an execution plan, bringing in metrics and data in order to measure success and build an execution plan to bring this to market. So this is a great way for you to consolidate your learning across the three courses and apply it in groups to 
um, a, an organization that you as a team decide to work with? So there's the question to your answer um, uh, in, in the chat there, uh, Esther Sham. And I would say it's, it's important for you to um, meet up well to, to agree with your fellow learners on the cohort uh, which is the right business to focus on typically we find people in similar time zones working together for practical reasons those also working in the same sectors coming together because that's a way you can be um, you could be focusing your minds on a specific industry which may be heavily regulated or subject to some very specific uh, terms of business uh, so are there any questions, if I can just stop there before we move on, are there any questions so far about the programme before I go on to the way that we grade, the way we manage it? Are there any questions from you guys about the programme itself? Please do let us know. Who evaluates, that's a great question, who evaluates the Capstone projects? That will be the learning support team. So we have a team dedicated to uh, identifying the, the strengths and weaknesses of each capstone and giving you uh, a, an assessment at the end, which will be used for you to get your qualification. And the minimum requirements now we're on that subject are that uh, you will need to get a, uh, a uh, hang on, sorry, that's that's the that's the qualification for the course. So you need to get, let me just move on to the relevant slide. Um, I think we've got, um, one moment, so I'll just go back. Uh, we, you, there will, there's a pass mark uh, assigned, I thought that was in this presentation, and as passed mark, uh, a grading for the assignment, what we require is that you score a GPA, which is a grade point average that runs from zero to 10. And we require you to get uh, a, a score, which is 4.67 out of 10 for the program. For students are required to achieve a minimum five out of 10 for the assignment. The assignment you need five out of 10, but the aggregate score is 4.67. And that indeed is graded by the um, program support team. Uh, is there a way to graduate with distinction with a certain grade? That's a great question from an ambitious learner. Um, I don't have the answer in front of me here, so perhaps I could push that one back to the program support team and I could ask someone in program support to answer that question in the chat, please. That's a good question from uh, Amita. Any other questions I'm looking at here? Are the lectures pre-recorded and when and when were they updated if they are online? So the programs is a combination of live and pre-recorded and the pre-recorded ones will be will be released on a weekly basis as you go through the program. We release the next week uh, on an ongoing basis rather than having them all there from the start. And if it's a live session that will be recorded and the live sessions will be put up on the Canvas platform, our learning platform, I'll come on to that in a few moments, uh, within 24 hours of them um, being, being delivered live. We've talked about the distinction question from Ambitious uh, Amita. I'm gonna move on now to another question. Does that learning support team contain individuals from MIT or Columbia? Well, the learning support team have created the program in partnership with the MIT and Columbia uh, business schools. Uh, they have, the, the Columbia and MIT um, faculty have authored and co-created the online program and the, the assignments must meet the standards that are set by the, the faculty. So yes, we do have review meetings and we make sure that the requisite um, standards of achievement are realized. Otherwise, we do not have a credible qualification. Next question, uh, what credits in terms of qualifications, which body did you use to grade the course? Well, it's as I've just said, it's done in conjunction with the business schools 
And so the qualification you'll get, and I'll show you a certificate at, at the end, and you can see the names of the business schools appear on the certificate. Uh, so there you go, Amita. 10% of the batch is identified as Emeritus Scholar and also gets a special badge, which can be used on LinkedIn as well. And yeah, it's an interesting point. Some people think that a qualification is uh, something for their own personal gratification, something they want to keep to themselves. Uh, others are very keen to put it up on their LinkedIn profile immediately in order to get a, a promotion or maybe a different job. And um, others, it's a very important sort of thing to talk about when they go for an interview. So up to you, but I tend to see a lot of visibility when people get their qualifications and being on that Emeritus Scholar list certainly has a lot of credibility. So thank you to the program support team for sharing that uh, back with Amita. Do we have any other questions before I move on? Any other questions while I get a glass of water? Uh, so Amita, after this June session, when does the next one start? I'm thinking closer to fall. Again, I don't have the time frame here, Amita. Program support will have that. It's a nine month program. I'm not sure when the next one starts, but perhaps program support can answer that question. So unless we have anything else, let me move on to the benefits for your organization and the benefits to you personally. And I think this is very important because there are clearly direct benefits to the individual and indirect benefits to the organization whose individuals are upskilled. So if we start with the organization, rather than just throwing money at people and giving them pay rises, what we see is a far more powerful way to drive loyalty and retention of talent is training and skills development. So there's a clear correlation between those who have received training and those who end up um, spending longer working with the business, getting promoted and adding a lot more value as employees to the organization itself. ROI, digitally ready, uh, talented, educated by world-class faculty. So it's, it's fundamental that we've got the right quality of learning that is fed into the individuals that are spent on, uh, sent onto the programs. Real world project exposure, the real value in what we do is provide these simulations of real world challenges and business problems. And that's uh, of huge value. If you wanted just to look at the course material, you could of course go, so go online and do it for free probably. Uh, it wouldn't be very good quality, but you could go online and do it but by using these real world simulations, it really brings it to, to life. Relevance, employees equipped with industry relevant skills and identify high potential candidates for succession planning. Of course, every business needs a, a, a succession plan and having those that are well qualified is a great way to do that. Uh, benefits to employees. So learning from the best, put simply, no financial burden. The great news here is that you can keep earning and you can be learning at the same time. And as the saying goes, the more you earn, the more you learn, the more you earn. So there's a clear correlation between the two, but you don't need to take time out to do this program. Accelerating your career while working and earning a diploma. So you're, you're doing three things in parallel and relevance to your work. You can apply the learnings in real time and the network benefits of belonging to Emeritus, which we've touched on very briefly already. So don't just take my word for it. You know, I'm a, a very close partner of Emeritus and uh, our, our work goes back many years and I've been hugely impressed by the programs, also by the faculty and also by the learners themselves. And it's, it's, it's this interaction with the learners which provide the real value to a facilitator like myself um, because we tend to find the people who come on this course have the, all the right ingredients. I'll come on to those in the next couple of slides. But where they come from is very important too. I've given you a bit of a flavour of the countries where I spend my time working. We typically train 4,000 people every year from uh, 40 different countries. That, that's personally, that's what I do. Uh, and the other faculty also have a great exposure to uh, learners from all over the world. So we are 
very sensitive the, to the cultural nuances and diversity that brings these learnings in a valuable way into your market. No surprises then to see we've got a large number of countries represented in people who have been on this program before, over 90 countries. Very diverse range of industries, 22 industries, and you can see there financial services, IT consulting, the big three, uh, telco healthcare are there as well. So a broad range of industries represented. What this means is if you're doing your capstone assignment, then you will be able to find people for sure, who have similar interests and similar profiles, given the diverse range of uh, people. And then the average age of participants. Now, I must say, I'm a little older than 35 myself. I say ruefully, but there is real value in having experience and expertise. The people coming on the course, they have worked in businesses. They do understand how to get stuff done and the things that get in the way. So we will be very much focusing on people with experience, getting them working together and providing a, a rich learning experience, which is very much real world focused rather than people straight out of school who don't have those digital, those, those business skills. And you would not be surprised, I hope, to see a large number of the world's biggest brands represented on this chart. So these are people who have been on the course and you can see uh, a, a representation of what I said earlier in logo forms. You see American Express, BlackRock, Accenture, three of the big ones in uh, financial services. We see EY, um, we see who else? Cognizant in terms of the business uh, consulting businesses. Uh, and then you look a little bit further down and we see um, some of the big packaged goods businesses there, P&G and Nestle uh, represented. And then looking uh, further afield, some of the game changers uh, in the e-commerce world. So the likes of Flipkart, uh, the likes of who else have we got there? Uh, I've seen there are other uh, e-com platform businesses represented. That's just a, a, a small handful, but we've got a broad range of digital and traditional but bricks and mortar businesses across a whole range of sectors. So what are you looking for? I suppose this is the, the next question. Just before I come on to this, let me jump in and have a look at Hannah's question here. What's better for someone with product to take into the market to learn or hire someone to do it for them? And that's a great question. Um, and you're clarifying. I mean, perhaps I could ask you to speak. Are we able to uh, put Hannah on, activate Hannah's microphone, if I can ask program support? If we can activate Hannah's microphone, that would be super interesting. Uh, and I may be able to do that here myself if the guys in program support can't do that. Let's just see. Hi, yeah. Um, hi, Rob. Yes. Hi there. How are you doing today? Awesome. Thank you so much. I've been enjoying Good. this. So my question is, uh, my husband and I are in the process of launching a security, digital security, uh, a cyber security product, excuse me. And we are currently looking whether we should learn ourselves or should we be hiring somebody to do it? Um, so that's the question I have. So it's a product in the cybersecurity space that we are about to go into the market. So that's the, um, yeah, that's basically my question. What's better as an owner? Should I learn myself? Should I hire myself? Is it better to do the combination of both? And it's, it's a great question that, and this is typical of so many people wanting to come on to our programs is to understand, uh, does the learning on this course equip you to uh, launch a product or service? And to what degree is, the, is that knowledge uh, required if you get someone else to do the job for you? So it's very difficult to, to answer that question, Hannah, without knowing about your skill set, about your husband's skill set, your network and the, the, the people who you can be uh, assisting in that journey. I would say either way, 
you should be, if you're going to hire people to do it, how are you going to hire the right people? How are you going to set them KPIs and performance uh, success factors if you don't understand the broad business context in which they're operating? So I would say either way, you do need to increase your learning. But I would also say if you're looking to do something very specialist, you can either get someone in who can bring some fresh ideas that you don't have yourself and can probably do some parts of the job very quickly and very efficiently, or you can try and do the whole thing yourself, but you will lack that external expertise and you will lack that speed to market. So it's a, it's a balancing act here. And I would say those are the factors that you need to take into consideration. I think it's always very dangerous to think you can do everything without external support. The question is whether the external support is on a consultancy basis or you get someone in full time and put them on the payroll. Does that help answer your question? Absolutely, definitely does help. So now that takes me to another question to you, Rob. Um, I don't know if this is outside of this uh, platform. Uh, I don't know if they're right question or not. Would you consider, um, say, let's say I'm looking for a service to be a consultant for whether it's to hire somebody else to do it or, to, you know, for somebody to overlook for everything. Do you provide such kind of service out of this, outside of this, um, um, I don't know if like if I'm an owner, I'm looking for somebody like that, maybe like I'm considering consulting with you. Do you, uh, does that, is this the right platform to ask such question? It's the wrong place to ask that question because we're talking about this program, but please feel free to, um, to, to connect with me. And, and if you wish, we can have a conversation separately. But I, I would say- Would you be able to provide me the best way to reach out? Um, if you, well, let me just put my name here and then you can find me on LinkedIn would be the easiest way there if I could just do that. Um, but, I did that, I think. Okay, that's great. So I would say, if I may, Hannah, if we can go back to the, 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 the question you raise is a really important one, although I don't want to talk any more about the specifics of your situation, but using this course as a way to hire in the right people to help you with your business venture, or indeed assemble a team to do something related to your transformation, or indeed better manage your existing team, there is real value uh, in this program and the practical nature of the capstone that helps you do it. So if I look to the screen, look back to the screen, what are we looking for? We're looking for the right people to come on this program. Now, this is a very heavily subscribed program we offer, and we need to make sure we've got the right people in the room and on the course, because there'd be nothing worse than saying anyone can roll up and do it. The quality of the learning for the other learners working in collaboration on these capstone assignments would be negatively impacted. So we need to make sure that we've got a, uh, a good quality cohort coming into the program. So we're looking for people with leadership initiatives who are looking to go beyond the scope of a predefined job role. We're looking for people who get stuff done, you know, make things happen. So strong execution skills rather than just pure kind of blue, blue sky thinkers. We're looking for people who are very clear in their thinking about defining a vision, which is an essential characteristic of, of, of digital leadership and very good communication skills to shape the future for the organization. We're looking for people who have uh, an understanding of the multicultural nature of the world and the sensitivities required working in different markets. We're looking for passionate people who are ambitious, people uh, who want, like Amita, to get the distinction rather than people who just want to tick a box and say they did the course. And we need people with professional experience, more than three years of experience. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as too much experience or being too old to do this program. Awesome. Uh, so from that, uh, Rob, maybe if I could ask a, a related question. So um, personally, I have uh, been doing digital marketing for the past six years. I've grown a seven-figure business online, 
primarily using Facebook or digital marketing, not necessarily from um, coming from, you know, educate, you know, being educated on the space. It was something that I just learn as I go by following different influencers and so forth and so on. So for somebody like that, that's already in the market, already um, knows that much to grow a seven figure business on Facebook, what would be, um, how do you see this for me being a fit in helping me take my skill to the next level? Well, I would say that uh, you know, building a business on the back of one of the other platforms, whether it's Amazon or Facebook, uh, you are not fully in control of your destiny there. I think there's real value in understanding how to build your own presence and understand uh, some of the dynamics around um, uh, your customer, understanding your customer and using the five pillar framework we looked at earlier and different ways of connecting with the customer and not being fully reliant on Facebook to do that for you. On the platform side, very important that we understand how a platform works because there may well be a platform opportunity for you that doesn't exist purely by being part of someone else's platform, in that case, Facebook. And in terms of digital strategy, understanding the value of the data and getting full access to all that data are you really getting 100% visibility of interactions with you via the Facebook network? I don't think you are. So I would say there definitely are reasons why you're going to be learning a whole lot more besides um, piggybacking on uh, one of the existing platforms. And if you want to get more out of that platform and consider different ways of building your business revenues, then there's going to be a lot of learning here about how to do that. If I can come on to Francisco's question, please. So Francisco, who is proposing the problems to be solved during the final project? Is there any collaboration with any corporate to propose projects uh, or is this something you should do ourselves? That's a great question. Um, I would say it's up to you, first of all, to figure out what sector uh, you're going to select for your capstone assignment and who you're going to be working with uh, in your group. And once you've identified that, then to find a business, if you wish to uh, focus on a specific business that's, uh, that's not your own, and discuss that with them. But that's something that we will be expecting you to come up with the initiative. Of course, the faculty are here to uh, advise as required, but we're certainly not here to spoon feed you and give the answer to that. Um, so while... Amita is working out whether she's joining the course in August, October or November. Let me move on to the next slide. And this is important that we need to make sure we've got people with the right uh, uh, skills to come on this programme. And to do that, we require you, as just said, to have three years experience, share with us your, your resume so we can see your business experience uh, and un understand that certain things are non-negotiable you need to have a bachelor's degree you need to have evidence if english is not your primary language of english spoken and written skills and the uh, toefl and ielts scores 550 and 6 respectively uh, are a requirement and we do require a copy of a certificate um, uh, in order to ensure that you've got the right qualifications and we will of course be giving you a certificate at the end of the program. There's also a small point there for 24, uh, sorry, for these countries here, submit a document which shows that the candidate has for 24 months or more worked in any of these countries. So there you see certain qualifications about your, your work history. And finally, proof of any diploma or qualification. So that's the housekeeping stuff. I, I don't want to get into the detail on that. Program support and the admissions team will handle all of that administration for you. The nitty gritty bit, if I can use those words, the fee for this program is 3000 US dollars. Uh, GST is payable if you happen to be uh, based in Singapore. There's a flexible payment plan either in one go or in two installments 
or in three installments, and the details are there on the screen. The programme starts on June the 30th, a meter if we can convince you to join by then. Um, and finally, the last application date will be the 28th. So we have just a bit of time before closing up this programme for you to get your submission in. Uh, and I'd like to just give you a couple of last points. The learning platform we use is called Canvas. It's very flexible. It provides a great user experience. And you can see from this slide here uh, on, on the menu structure, we will be loading up your program. You will be loading up your own personal profile. You'll have your own inbox and your own calendar. You'll have your discussion board, your grading, and uh, an inbox to communicate with the other people on your cohort, with the people in your capstone group, and also with your uh, lecturer or your, your tutor. This is where you'll also be downloading the pre-recorded videos, the reading materials, and you'll be having these live sessions on um, Zoom that we're the equivalent of what we're doing now. These will be loaded up onto the Canvas platform where you can, you can be watching those after the program itself. We had a question about certificates earlier. There is the certificate for this program. So you'll see three logos on there, Emeritus, MIT, and Columbia Business School, and uh, signed evidence you have indeed passed the qualification. I seem to spend a long time on LinkedIn uh, commenting on people who have um, put their post out saying how pleased they are to have got an Emeritus certificate. This is a, this is a, pretty, uh, a pretty important part of the program as discussed earlier. So as we near the end of our session today, let me just ask, are there any other questions, any other questions that have come up that we need to address? I see we've got a few in the Q&A here. Uh, we've looked at Hannah's questions. We've looked at uh, Francisco's questions. Uh, Aslan, can you give an idea of what format will a capstone look like? Presentations needed? How detailed is it? So the ones that I've been involved in, we see uh, Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, both of those are fully acceptable. What I would say is that you should be including source material and clickable links to uh, materials so that the, uh, those assessing the assignments can see what you have uh, sourced by way of background research. Now, we can't expect you to put everything in the assignment, but putting clearly defined links to third party sources, whether it's a, a, a video that you, you found on YouTube, whether it's um, a, a document or a piece of uh, academic research, or whether it's a template that you've completed as part of the templates that we build into the learning framework, all of those should be, should be included in your assignment. Um, so, Online education is not taken seriously by high-end recruiters, but how this diploma addresses this issue. I would say to that point, online education is getting taken more and more seriously as for reasons beyond anyone's control, we're not able to travel. So I think that's not actually uh, true, but I suppose it depends who you're talking to. I would say more and more employers are, and recruiters are taking online uh, training very seriously these days. What are continued education opportunities of this? Well, there are many other programs we run, and uh, I would say this is a very good foundation for you to jump off and do other programs, look into more detail. If I don't have all the requirements, but I also don't need the qualification paper, can I still enroll? Um, Hannah, you're asking the wrong person. I would be asking program support that question, and they'll be able to assess precisely what, uh, what you have. In fact, I see program support are responding to you as I, as I say this. So please, Hannah, I'll put you in their capable hands. So are there any other questions right now, which I can answer, that link to the program itself and the program materials? Any other points? Just one thing on timing after August, if any. Okay, so again, I'm going to pass back to the
be you can await an email okay so amita that will be good and it looks like that's in that's in hand then uh francisco is there any collaboration with any corporate for the project again if you can go back to the pro program support team on that one uh this is something we have talked about i don't know the latest on that situation clearly a lot of corporates are sending people on this program there may well be some opportunities to hook up with those corporates uh but i i'm not familiar with the latest on that so if i may i'll pass that to program support also so if that's all we're, we're on the hour now i hope you found this a useful session i hope it's covered the main objectives of this program the content how we run it and some of the mechanics behind the, the 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 running of it and what you get at the end of it let me take this opportunity to thank you all very much for your valuable time today i hope you find this is uh, certainly worthy of further research and hopefully we've done a little bit better than that and this is a program you'll want to sign up to uh, i'll leave you with the program support team to uh, follow up on that application process and hope very much we will see you on the program itself. So with that, thank you very much. And um, I'll wish you a very happy rest of the day. And I hope the rain stops for you in Islamabad. And if it's raining anywhere else and enjoy the rest of your week also. So thank you for that. And let's stop the session here.